now that my dog's already stolen the limelight for my video, I'll just go ahead and introduce myself. So my name's Pooja and welcome to my channel. So what is this channel about you ask? Well, it's about the things that I like, the things I like to do, the things I'm obsessed with. So obviously skincare is one of them. So I'll do some videos about skincare and some tips and tricks and information and I think you'll find it really helpful. I'm not a qualified skincare professional or anything like that. I'm just obsessed with everything skincare related. So I love trying new things. I love researching, I love learning about skincare. So that's where I've got all my knowledge from. So I thought it'd be really helpful to share. And one of the first videos I'm gonna start by doing is about skin types. So I thought this is a really good place to start because a lot of people also love skincare but they really struggle with their own skin or they have some skin concerns and a lot of that is quite easily managed as long as you know your skin type or any skin concerns you have. Why? Why is my lighting changing? Why is it raining today and there are clouds outside and all that keeps happening is a bit of bit of sun and then there's a cloud. So I'm sorry about the fluctuating lighting, but it's not me. I can't, I can't change that. I'm not God. So we'll start by talking about the different types of skin. And I can do a whole other video on skin concerns because that is a whole other chapter. So skin types are the number one thing that you should really be looking at when you are starting out your skincare journey and when you're putting together a really good skincare routine. So if you're not sure what skin type you are, don't worry, I'll get to that. But I'm just going to start by explaining what a skin type is. So first things first, it is all determined through your genetics. Skin type is based on the size of your pores, it is based on how much oil secretes through your pores and things like that. Um, so you can't actually change your skin type. You are born with one and usually, for the most part, everyone sticks to the same skin type, but you can manage it. So obviously, if your skin type is not ideal or anything that you actually want, you can manage it and deal with it using skincare products and techniques. So skin types. So there are five different skin types and that you can either be normal, combination, oily, sensitive or dry. And they are the five categories that everyone falls into. And like I said, there are different ways to manage each one. So I'll go through some of the problems of each one and how to kind of tackle them as well. Okay, so I know that everyone wants to fall in the normal category just because it's nice and easy. Who wouldn't want to just go into the shops and just pick up any skincare, any face cream, any sort of serum and just be okay with it and their skin's just like, oh yeah, it's fine. Yeah, everyone. I do. I would love to. I'm combination. I would love to be normal skinned because sometimes it is a pain in the... <laughs> People with normal skin, you have a nicely regulated amount of sebum, so the oils that your skin produces. You don't have any random patches that are too dry or any patches that are too oily. Your T-zone is usually quite clear. You don't have any sort of real congested areas that are oily and your skin isn't even really that sensitive. So you're the lucky ones. Well done. Congratulations <laughs> on your amazing skin. I don't have such amazing skin like that and I have to work really hard to maintain it. But like I said, you might have normal skin and you might still have like acne or something. You might have normal skin and some dehydration. So it's always the two things that are always together. So you have your skin type and your skin condition. I don't know what these claws are. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so you've got your skin type and you've got your skin condition. The two will always go together and that will form what your skin usually is. So with normal skin, you want to just look out for things like essential oils because they can actually irritate the skin a little bit. You don't want to use too much hot water. So you want to do things that are sensible. You want to look after your skin still. It's not just about, oh, it's fine. I can use hand wash for my face or, you know, just not wash your face or, you know, moisturize with foot cream and things like that. Please just be sensible. It's still skincare. Okay, so moving on to combination skin. Like I said, I have combination skin. So I get quite an oily T-zone and the rest of my skin is actually kind of normal. I get random little dry patches, but it's not that often. 
so that is my main problem just the oily t-zone so that's the part that i have to usually take care of so with combination skin you need to worry about rebalancing and the skin needs rebalancing in all the areas where it's not normal so if it's dry those areas need more nourishing and if it's oily those areas need rebalancing of the oils for combination skin, your skin can sometimes get quite irritated easily. Your skin can also break out quite easily. And that's just because it's not balanced. So in terms of a moisturiser, you want to think about things like a thinner consistency. You don't want something that's super rich and heavy because it will sit quite heavily on the oily areas of your skin. So things like a gel cream are really nice for combination skin. They sit quite lightly on the skin, but they are quite hydrating. So you won't feel that the skin's too dry. During summertime, you might find like a lotion is a little bit nicer. It's quite nice and thin, but you don't want anything too heavy. So to deal with the oily areas, what you want to do is actually add some oil into the skin. I'll discuss that a little bit more when we come to oily skin, but basically see what that means is that by adding oil to the oily areas, which sounds crazy, I know, don't panic. What that means is that the pores will automatically start thinking that they've got enough oil. They're like, oh, I don't need to worry so much. I don't need to produce so much. I don't need to be pumping out so much oil to then make that area excessively oily. So. Twice a week, I will use a face oil all over. It just feels really nice all over, even on the areas that are dry. But in the oily area, you'll find that the more you do this, the better balanced it will be. So you'll find that it won't be so oily a couple of hours after washing your face anymore. It will, your makeup will sit a little bit better as well on top. You also want to use clay masks on the oily areas. So because there is excess oil there, you want to use a clay mask maybe once, maybe twice in the week just in the t-zone or just in the areas that are oily just to kind of absorb the excess oils and that helps to really balance out between the too oily and the dry and it kind of keeps it nice and balanced but to make sure that it doesn't dry anything out too much you also need to be adding hyaluronic acid into your skincare so this is something that i do daily hyaluronic acid is something that i use in a serum base every single day so in the morning i will always 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 use a hyaluronic acid and that keeps my skin really hydrated and plump and it doesn't dry out okay so in terms of exfoliation you want to use some salicylic acid so you want bhas on your skin and that will ensure that the areas that have oily skin are being penetrated down to the pore and all that excess sebum is being cleared out so that it's not causing any breakouts or it's not causing you any acne issues or anything like that okay so speaking of oily skin let's talk about oily skin so Oily skin is where your skin can get quite greasy, it's quite shiny, you can have a lot of acne or a lot of breakouts because of this, just because the oils are congesting your pores. You might find that a couple of hours after washing your face, your skin is super oily. You might find that when you put your makeup on, you can bake as much as you want, but that oil will come through. So to deal with this, you have a few different things that you need to do. Like I said, your pores think that they don't have enough oil going on. So a lot of people think that if they strip the oils off the top of their skin, if they wash their face loads, if they exfoliate their face loads, people who use that, I'm not going to say the name, but that apricot scrub really think that using those kind of products is going to help to get rid of the excess oil and everything's all good. It's not. All that is really doing is letting the pores think that there's no oil sitting on the top of the skin. So the, the pores are freaking out. The pores are like, oh my God, must make oil. Must make oil. And then they just push more oil to the surface. And there you go. You have an oily face again. Then you have breakouts and you have congested skin. It's a vicious circle. So to stop that, you want to use oils. It sounds ridiculous. It sounds scary. People think I'm crazy when I say this. People think I'm crazy when I say a lot of things, but what you want to do is gently introduce some oils back into your skincare. So about three or four times a week, you want to use a face oil at bedtime. I wouldn't recommend using it in the daytime. Like I said, you're going to be an oil slick by 12 p.m. So you want to do it at bedtime. A few drops of an oil such as rosehip oil or squalene is a really good one as well. They are nice thin consistencies. They're not too heavy. I'm not asking you to go and get your mum's cooking oil and slap that on your face 
or go and open a jar of coconut oil and slap that on your face. Those things, the molecules are too big, they will sit horribly on your skin, so please don't do that. So for oily skin, you wanna use clay masks about three times a week, and they will just really help to, again, absorb any of the excess oils that are just sitting on the top of the skin. They can be very, very helpful in rebalancing all of your skin, but you don't wanna use them too often. You don't wanna overdo it and suck all that oil out of the skin again. So in terms of exfoliation, Again, using salicylic acids is really, really good for this skin type, using BHAs. They will really just help to get to the bottom of the pores and clear out any of that excess sebum and really help to decongest the skin. And you wanna use either an exfoliating toner or you can use it in a gel or like a serum kind of form and using it a few times a week to, to begin with is really, really helpful for oily skin. Okay, so moving on to dry skin. <laughs> Ain't nobody trying to be dry. So what you want to do is look at your skin and if your skin is flaky, if it is kind of patchy, if you've got areas where there's little patches of dry dead skin, if the surface of your skin is irritated quite easily, it can be red in some areas, sometimes it's a little bit sensitive too. If you have any of that going on, my friend, you have dry skin and I'm sorry. However, this is a skin type that can be managed quite well. You might find that seasonally it can get worse. It might get a lot worse in winter times and in summer times it, it might not be so bad for you. To deal with this skin type, one of the biggest things you need to do is exfoliate the dead cells that are sitting on top of the skin. So sometimes because it's dry and there's so many dead cells on the top and there's flaky skin on the top, there's, and no matter how much nourishment you use to get inside, it doesn't do anything because the cells on top won't let it get through. So you got to break them off. So use some AHAs, use things like glycolic acid, or if you've never used an acid, a really good one to start with is lactic acid. That is a gentler version of glycolic acid, basically. You can use an exfoliating toner uh, with AHAs in it to really kind of get off those dead skin cells so that you can really start nourishing the skin underneath. And I'd say do it maybe three to four times a week to begin with and then see how your skin gets on with that. So dry skin is lacking oil. So what do you want to do? You want to use oil. So try again the rosehip oil or squalene. There's quite a few good face oils, but what you don't want to do is use anything with essential oils in it. They can irritate the skin quite badly, and that's never good, especially for dry and sensitive skin types. I would recommend using an oil at bedtime, but if your skin is really dry, if it really drinks up the oil, I'd say use a little bit in the morning as well, in the daytime, so you can maybe mix it in with your face cream, or even on its own, however you feel, you can layer it up and see what suits your skin best. In terms of a moisturiser, you want to use something thicker, more hydrating, a little bit more sort of comforting as well if your skin feels a little bit irritated. So you can use something that has ceramides in it because that will help to rebuild the surface of your skin and any of those broken areas. So onto sensitive skin. So sensitive skin is quite irritated. You can find that it's a bit itchy, it stings quite easily, it, gets, it reacts quite easily to products it might also feel like it burns sometimes. So to deal with this skin type, you want to avoid anything scrubby. So in terms of exfoliating, you wanna be really careful. You don't want to use a physical exfoliator. Like I said, that lovely apricot scrub, <laughs> throw it in the bin. That is not a scrub that you wanna be using. It doesn't help your skin at all. If anything, it makes it a lot worse. So you wanna use things like lactic acid again, glycolic acid, just to gently exfoliate the skin. Don't overdo anything, don't go crazy with it. I'd say maybe a couple of times a week to start with and just see how you get on. And you wanna, again, make sure you are using some rich nourishing creams to help rebuild the surface layer of your skin. So again, ceramides are amazing. You can get serums with it in, you can get masks with it in. Even the face creams are lovely. And like I said, with irritation, you wanna be really careful with essential oils and you want to be super careful with things that have alcohol in them there's a lot of products that have alcohol in them so you need to be really careful but now there is a massive range of products out there and you will find products that don't have alcohol in them so just go for something that's not too harsh on your skin so if after all that you still don't know your skin type then i can't help you no i'm joking so what you want to do is go and wash your face 
as you would normally in the mornings no, nothing too scrubby nothing too crazy you don't unless you're wearing makeup you don't need to be double cleansing or anything just go wash your face and then you want to leave it <coughs> don't do anything no face creams no serums no exfoliation nothing don't touch it leave it be for about two hours and see what happens to see what your skin does if it gets suddenly really oily, if your T-zone is crazy, if it's really dry, if it feels really tight, you will be able to understand your skin type better. If it's super oily, you got oily skin. If it is just oily in your T-zones or in certain patches, it's combination. If it is dry all over or it's really tight or your pores are really, really tiny, you have dry skin. If it's none of the above, you have normal skin and you're fine. So according to these things is how you should go and look for your skincare so there are products targeted for each skin type and i know sometimes it is really overwhelming but there are lots of companies lots of brands that can really help you with your skin type and if you explain to them i have so and so skin type my skin does this they will really be able to help you with what products you're looking for so things like serums are usually designed to treat your skin conditions and your skin concerns. So your hyperpigmentation, you'd use a serum that treats that. If you have acne, you might have special treatments for that. So your moisturizer is something that you would use to target your skin type and your face wash as well. So whichever cleanser you're using is targeted towards your skin type. Okay, so that is the end of this video. I hope you learned something. I hope that was interesting. I hope that you are able to identify your skin type a bit better and I can do some videos on each skin type individually and just go into a bit more detail if you'd like and I'll be talking about skin concerns and skin conditions in another video so make sure you keep an eye out for that. If you have any specific skin conditions that you'd like to ask me about or if you have any questions about today's video leave me a comment. Even if you have any suggestions for videos let me know. So yeah thank you for watching. Make sure you comment, like and subscribe.